Hey guys, Chaps here, and today I wanted to show you how I made my router sled. For those who aren't familiar, it's basically a tool that will allow me to use my router as a makeshift planer. I'd love to get a thickness planer, but a decent one's in the $400 to $600 range, and I don't really feel like investing in one right now. So I decided to make this thing myself. Basically, you straddle a piece of wood and pass the router back and forth working your way down. Once you've covered the full board, you should have a nice and level board. In order to keep this thing cheap, I mostly wanted to utilize some scrap that I had around the shop. This 3 quarter inch plywood is going to be the foundation, and I think it's left over from this workbench that I made. The basic design is a slotted plywood base with two vertical walls to hold the router in place. I also then plan on adding a couple pieces of angle iron to keep it straight over time, and some end blocks to use as stoppers, and really just to hold it all together nicely. I started by laying everything out to figure out how large my base needed to be. I want it to be able to cover something 2 to 3 feet wide, so I'm going to aim for 3 feet in length. Accounting for the angle iron, vertical walls, and router, I put a mark at my cut line, and I also left a little bit of wiggle room so that A, I don't have sharp angle iron corners poking out, and B, as a nice bonus, I don't need to worry about being super precise in my assembly. I'm going to start by using some DAP contact cement to attach the first piece of angle iron. It should be good enough, though it would have been nice to screw or bolt it down, and I may go back and do that later. With that set, I can place down the first vertical wall. This is getting glued down with wood glue and CA glued to the angle iron. By placing my two router bases in here, I can see exactly how much space I need for the next wall. I want it somewhat tight, but a 16th to 18th inch of wiggle room would be fine. Getting that clamped in place, I can now let the glue dry for a bit. Once that's dry enough, but still not fully dry, I can finish up by applying CA glue to get that final angle iron piece down. And lastly, I just took some of the leftover scraps from this baseboard and made some end walls to glue in. And there we have it. The basics for a router sled frame. Up next I cut a slot down the middle, but I'm going to wait overnight for everything to dry. Now how do I cut this slot? Well I'm using a 2 inch diameter blade here, and it's larger than the hole in the bottom of my router's base. Well I could take the plastic base plate off the bottom of my router's plunge base, but then a better idea dawned on us. I started by using a 2.5 inch hole saw attachment for my drill. I kinda lucked out. This hole saw is actually my dad's and he left it at my place last Christmas when we did some work on my master bath. But with this hole now drilled, we have a place that the bit can pass through. Being the bit needs to cut through the surface though, we're either going to need to raise the router, or again remove the base plate from the plunge base. Here we decided it would be easier just to add a few side rails. Just some rough cut scraps to lift it up about a quarter of an inch or so. I also put a few cross pieces in there to ensure that it stayed spaced out while I'm working. And lastly I clamped a few blocks down on them to hold them in place. Now I can slide the router back and forth and take off about the first quarter inch for that slot. This was much slower than expected and made a ton of sawdust. I actually had to pause and put on a face mask because it was pretty bad. So after this pass we've got this nice channel. I did need to move the spacers in the end a little bit so that I could get as close as possible to the ends, but that wasn't a big deal. Next I removed the rails that raised the router and adjusted the height. I already took off about a quarter inch and I had a half inch left. In theory this bit could take off that full half inch, but that's a bit too much to reasonably take in one pass, so I adjusted it to take off another quarter inch-ish, or maybe slightly more. So here we go for pass two, and it's looking pretty good. Again there is a ton of sawdust and it kinda looks like it's snowing in the shop right now. One more adjustment, and here's pass three. I really wasn't prepared for the amount of sawdust this project made. I don't really use a router that much, so I'm not used to this. I brushed and I vacuumed occasionally, and we even got an overhead fan with a filter going, but man, we got a nice fine dust coat over most of the basement. After each pass, I actually went upstairs to let the dust settle a bit due to concerns over breathing it in, even with my mask on. But finally, the hard part's out of the way, or so I thought at least. All that's left now is to add a few legs and give it a go. For the legs, I'm using some 2x3s. It's key to make sure this thing is level though. If the whole thing isn't level, then the board it cuts won't be level. I'm just screwing these on for now because I may want to replace them in the future with some different sized boards. Now I can't really show you the project that I'm working on that caused me to make this sled, it's actually a Christmas present and I don't want to spoil the surprise. That said, here's a scrap piece of wood that we can do some test runs on. Again, I'll stress the importance of being level. I've got this nice old cast iron table saw and I trust that as being pretty flat, so I opted to use that as my surface of choice. As you see, each pass chops out about a 2 inch section and it just planes it down slightly. But yeah, it just isn't working right. The sled is too high and I needed to lift up this cut board, and it's just making for an uneven surface. I'm going to go ahead and flip these 2x3s down to get the sled lower and remove the need for these extra lifting boards. I'll also switch over to a piece of trim, as that may better demonstrate what it's actually doing. Still not perfect, but much better. 
You can see some of the lines here from where there's a step difference. An aggressive sand gets rid of that, but yeah, it's still not great. After a bit of experimenting, I found a better way to clamp the board to keep it steady. So yeah, here's the results of try number three. It's much better, and after some very light sanding, I can barely feel it, but I can still see the lines from the right angle. Next, I decided to just give it a go on a flat board. These are the best results yet. Again, with only like 10 seconds of very brief sanding, you practically can't feel the lines anymore. I even turned this board and tried doing some passes in the long direction. And again, it's not too bad. A bit of sanding will smooth this out. I think I finally got things pretty well figured out now. So I guess all there is to do now is run the actual project piece through. I'll end up needing a bit of sanding, but that's not the end of the world. To see the actual project that this is made for, make sure you subscribe and check back after Christmas. If you found this helpful, please consider dropping this a like, and if you have any questions, just let me know. Thanks for watching everyone, and I will catch you next time.